Tools of the Betrayed. Uh, oh my gosh, that's such a dramatic title for an almost entirely comedic episode. Tools of the Betrayed. <laughs> but you know what? It's a pretty good comedic episode. It's one of those more run-of-the-mill Power Rangers outings that allows us to just enjoy the company of our team. And the writing and dialogue feels very bouncy and kept me smiling, especially anything involving the villains. They're just too much fun. Quite rude! We also finally remember Devon's most most important character trait. That's right, it's the return of Devon Player One. Now, this is a very important episode because at last we have another Zoe Focus episode. That's right, after eight episodes, we're gonna get right back into- Lol, just kidding, it's more of a Ben and Betty episode. I thought you were supposed to be on my side. Wait, where are you going? I need some space to think. <laughs> I'm going to use this as an opportunity to muse generally on Zoe, so buckle up, I guess. The character has sadly felt underused in the series so far, having only really had one focus story in 11 episodes. Oh, well, we could count this as the second one. It, as I said, it feels more Ben and Betty centric, so I, I don't know if I'm going to count it. A lot of promise in the character setup, as well as a good performance, just hasn't been used. Instead, Zoe is kind of kept to the sidelines and not really given much character beyond nice. I honestly keep going on about her hating Jax because it's the only the interesting character trait I've managed to pick up on. Maybe Devin has a point. I thought you were supposed to be on my side. Wait, where are you going? I wish you were never born. Oh my god, I love it. She she hates him. She hates him. I was talking to friend of the show, Jessica, about Zoe, and it helped me pick out what's bothering me about her character. She currently feels like the stock only girl character in the show, where they have to always be smooth around the edges, nice and upbeat, available for one of the male characters to have a crush on, and the general kind voice of reason character. This potentially is faulty thinking that comes from only having one female ranger, where the writers feel pressure for Zoe to represent all women equally and be an avatar for all girls. This means her personality can never get into anything specific because they're worried that'll alienate some of the female audience. I think this effect often plays out in Three Ranger teams and actually happens in general children's media quite a bit. Oh, who am I kidding? It happens in all media quite a bit. Honestly, please make female characters unique and specific and have their own voice, even if they're the only female character in the story. Which they uh, probably shouldn't be. This is exactly the kind of sloppy writing that comes out of tokenism. She currently feels like she's written as the girl ranger, but I'd love for future episodes to help her define herself more. Let's make her the working class ranger or the endlessly determined ranger. I'm not trying to be overly harsh on the writing here. Honestly, I like the show, and that's why I would like for more of the potential to be explored and the character to be developed more in the future. All right, and I'll see you in the next episode. I've spent the last two episodes kind of breaking down things that aren't working for me in the show, so I'll, I'll be more upbeat next time. Uh, peace out, my hot dogs.